we believe about that, okay? That, that some of us believe that God will never give us more than we can handle. That's absolute lie, okay? And so really this is a series about theology more than it is our mouths, all right? And so we're going to look at some of those phrases in this series. Um, and there, that's one of the examples we're going to look at today is, is God will never give you more than you can handle. Have you ever heard that before in your life? Yeah, we hear that a lot. Um, and we're going to look at why people would say that. Um, have you heard the one, God helps those that help themselves? Have you heard that one before? Total fabrication. That is not biblical whatsoever. Like, it's so opposite Bible, to be honest, okay? But you hear that. Um, have you heard that faith fixes everything? Have you heard that one before? Yeah, faith doesn't always fix things, okay? Sometimes there's just a bad situation that faith isn't going to fix, okay? There's just reality. Um, have you heard, don't judge others, right? Don't judge. Christians shouldn't judge. That's taken out of context a lot of times. Um, watch out because God's going to get you. You heard that one, right? <laughs> God's not a police officer up there just waiting for you to break the law so you get a flat tire, right? I like, we say a lot of things or hear a lot of things. Maybe even you've said some of these things that aren't necessarily true, okay? And this, I'm not trying to create like the phrase police, okay? This is not what the series is about, but it's about what do we believe? Do we really believe that God is up in heaven like this cop that's just waiting to get us, waiting until we mess up, right? That's, that's not the God of the universe. That's not the God that we're here to worship, this uh, punitive God that's just waiting to burn us, okay? And so we're going to talk about some of those things. Now, have you heard the one forgiving means forgetting? Have you heard that before, right? That's so untrue, so untrue biblically. Um, and so we're going to look at why... People might come up with those thoughts, where they would get them in the Bible, specifically like this morning today, um, we're going to talk about this one in 1 Corinthians. So go ahead and grab your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians. Our first phrase that we're going to look at is this one that's up on the screen, that God will never give you more than you can handle. Now, for, for me, um, it's, it seems pretty clear that this came out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Um, I know there's one person here because she's doing it currently right now. Have any of you ever done the Experiencing God study before? Yeah, in that study, this is one of those memory verses. Remember you had to memorize, I think, seven or 12 verses. This is one of those verses. Um, have you memorized it already, Mom? Did you get it? She ain't got it yet. Does anyone have this verse memorized without looking at it? Yeah, Charles does, of course, right? Of course. A student over here, right? No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He'll provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. This is that verse that we're talking about here that probably people use this verse to substantiate this phrase, God will never give you more than you can handle. So let's look at it. And in fact, on the screen today... Um, all of my verses are going to be out of the New Living Translation because I actually wrote this message last week when I was on vacation up in Flagstaff. And that's, I had the NLT with me, so all my verses will be NLT, which normally they're New American. But look at the verse in the NLT here. It says this. It says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. So that's probably where they get that, right? But when you are tempted, he'll show you a way out so that you can endure it. The problem here with this phrase is that people take this, this verse here to substantiate that God will never give you anything that you can handle. But what is, what is Paul talking about here? God will never allow what to be so much that you can handle it. What's the first two words of this, of this verse? We're talking about here temptation. Okay, this, is, this verse is specifically about temptation. Okay, it has nothing to do with trials or troubles or punishment for sin or whatever. This verse specifically deals with temptation that, yes, you're not going to be tempted more than you can stand. He's going to provide a way out for you. But what do a lot of us do? Let's say the temptation, my temptation is to choke uh, Jacob around the neck. That's my temptation, right? And I'm really getting tempted. I'm going to choke him. I'm going to choke him. God provides a way out before I even have to get near him, right? 
but I, I cross that boundary, I cross that boundary, I cross that boundary, I come over here, I get my arms around his neck, and I start squeezing, and then I ask God, get me out of this, right? That's what we do in life. We get so close to the sin, we get so close to the sin, and then we expect God to give us this escape plan. When your escape plan was three weeks ago, when you should have just said sorry, right? So a lot of times we do that with temptation, but check this out. This, this is what's crazy about this. Most people, when they tell you, God will never give you more than you can handle, it's not when you're in a tempting situation. When do people tell you, or when have you heard that phrase, God will never give you more than you can handle? It's probably when you're in some kind of trial or trouble or something's wrong or you're sick or, or whatever, not when you're being tempted. Rarely is this phrase ever shared when you're in this temptation. Okay, this phrase is normally shared when you're having trouble, when things are going bad for you, when you when you're broke, right, or whatever. Those are all trials. And it, I'm looking at you. Most of you were here for our James series. And you can remember we talked about the difference between trial and temptation, right? Temptations are sent by who do, do you remember who temptations are sent by? Satan sends temptations, and this like kind of, I've got this kind of phrase up here. Satan sends temptations, and the way that temptations work is there's a desire that leads you to sin or disobey, and that leads to death, okay? Satan brings temptations in your life, presents this desire that you have, and when you pursue that, that becomes sin, and what does sin lead to? It leads to death. The purpose of temptations is to get you to sin, and the purpose of Satan is to get you to sin, so that way you experience death. God, though, brings trials. God is the author of trials in your life. And so God will bring some trouble or some pain or some circumstances or some things in your life that are troubling and so God sends a trial and there's pain that's designed to make you endure it. And through that endurance, you become more like Christ. You become mature. Pain plus endurance equals maturity, equals growth. Perseverance, absolutely. So that when we're in a trial is when most times people would share this phrase, God will never give you more than you can handle, man. And it's such a lie because God is purposefully giving you more than you can handle. So that way you rely on Him and you persevere. And on the other end, you're standing stronger because of it. It's purposeful. You eventually get to the point where you say, God, I can't deal with this anymore. I need you. And then he comes in and he fixes you and he mends your broken heart or he heals you or he does whatever he's going to do in you. And you look back on that and you say, God was there for me. He's faithful. I can trust him. And you grow in your faith. So God absolutely does bring things, many things in our life that are too much for us to handle on our own. And it's in order that we would look back to him and say, God, lead me here, help me here, grow me here. The purpose of pain is growth. The purpose of those trials, those things that you can't handle is so that God can grow you. And there are plenty of verses Tons and tons and tons of verses that support this idea. Look at some of these just really quick. James chapter 1, verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity, we talked about this, for great joy. Because you know you're going to grow out of it. Look at what he says. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance or perseverance has a chance to grow. He's talking about growth here. The trials will produce growth. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials or troubles. Okay, this is, these are things that you can't handle. Rejoice. For we know that they help us to develop what? Endurance, perseverance, faith, growth. Trials help us grow. When you go to the gym, okay? 
Do you just go to the gym and look at the machines and say, I'm getting buffer already? I mean, that's, I like to do that, but it does it work. Does just walking into the gym and looking at that treadmill and visualizing yourself sweating to the oldies, does that work? You got to what? You got to get on the treadmill. There's got to be some pain involved. You got to what? You got to sweat. Sweat off them pounds. Okay? Lift those heavy weights. It hurts because your muscles, they're building pain, endurance, trials, all of those things. That's about our growth, and God wants those things in our life. Look at verse 4. And endurance develops what? Strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. I'm going to share one more just as this like to put a nail in the coffin here. Okay, First Peter chapter 1. So be truly glad there's a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials, again, for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. This is how God weeds out who's a real follower and who's not. A lot of you know people that are going to church, everything's great, they look like the model Christian, and then something bad happens in their life, and then what? They're gone. They're out. See you later. You don't want to have no part of it anymore. Right? You've seen people like that. You've experienced that in your life if you've been around church for a while. This is what happens. Look, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it'll bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So this statement that God will never give us more than we can handle is just biblically wrong. Okay? Just don't say it anymore because it's not true. And I'm not saying that the next time you hear that, you need to get up in their face. Jenny, I can't believe you said that. You were so wrong biblically. You, ah! You're like, that's not how we're supposed to be, right? We're not, I'm not calling you to be the, that's not the point of this series is to be the phrase Nazi, right? And just wait until someone's saying one of these things. No, you're wrong, right? But the point is to come alongside someone and say, well, I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Because a lot of times people will say this just to what? To comfort you, right? They'll say some of these things. Maybe your grandma says this, and she said it for 100 years, right? I don't know. Most times, people are just trying to comfort you. And so you got to understand that so you're not just out to, like, knock them over the head because they've said something scripturally wrong. But you got to understand that, listen, that just because they said it doesn't mean that it's true, okay? And so we're going to look at some more of those the reality, though, is that God will give us more than we can handle in order to grow us, okay? That there would be growth in our life. So we're going to look at that acronym, GROW, okay? An acronym is just a cool word of saying, let me preach four points, okay? Uh, G, if you're a note taker, you can write these things down. I'm going to look at how to grow through trials. When trials come, and it's not if they come, okay? All of these scriptures say when trials come your way. Did you notice that? They all said when trials come your way. That's much different than if. When trials come your way, consider it pure joy because you're going to grow. So how do we grow? First, first, first thing we need to do in a trial is give the problem to God. Give it to God. Go right to Him. Look at this, James 1.5. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and He'll give it to you. He will not rebuke you if you're asking. We need to pray for wisdom and guidance. Say, God, get, help me here. Give me an understanding of what this problem is. Give me discernment on how to see it from your point of view. Help me see you in this, God. Help me see where you're working because I don't like this. I don't like this. This is not fun. It's not cool. I'm not enjoying this. I know I'm supposed to have joy, but I'm not enjoying this. Help me see what you're doing here, God, okay? We need to always go to God first. Yes, hear me. Come to, come to your pastor. Ask for advice, for sure. Go to a Christian counselor. Yes. Read a book on what the problem is. Yes. But before you do any of that, go to God, okay? And not, not that I, you know, I don't want you wasting my time. That's not the point of this. Go to someone, but go to God first, 
go to God first with the problem because here's what might happen. When he gives you discernment, you may realize that this problem is not a trial, but just consequence of your stupid mistakes, right? Because sometimes we sin and we have to pay consequences for sin, right? Sometimes you want to go a little faster, like Mars, right? Like Mars likes to drive a little faster than signs will just say, say. St. <laughs> Mars gets pulled over, right? And gets a ticket. And let's just say it's a $119 ticket. Let's just say that. And he calls Jen, right? And he says, Jen, hopefully you got an extra 120 bucks. Is that a trial? That's a consequence, right? Because you had a lead foot. In this, like a lot of times, trouble comes our way and we're like, oh God, why? And all we need is godly wisdom to say, I know why, because I'm an idiot, right? I did something stupid yesterday, okay? Jason and Marcia and I went to the races up in Phoenix and I drank like about five energy drinks, okay? And I'm still amped up right now for like... I know why, because I was dumb. I drank these, you know, they were halfsies or something. But and see, I'm getting the look from Cynthia because she knows how bad these things are. But like, I know. Then we ate at this restaurant that Mars knew was going to do something to his belly, right? <laughs> knew it going in. And we're driving. He's like, why? <laughs> you know why? Go to God first and God's going to show you, Right? Ask for godly wisdom and discernment in these things because a lot of times the bad things that are happening, they're not, they're not spiritual at all. It's just circumstances or it's consequence of our sin. So we need to go to God first. Yes, ask a pastor, ask your small group leader, do all those things, but go to God first because sometimes the problem isn't spiritual. And so then when it's not spiritual, number two, the R in the word grow is we need to repent. We need to repent of the sin that may have brought on that problem. Okay? Acts 3.19. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. The problem could be because of your own sin. Just reality. It could be brought on because you were disobedient. Okay? And you're just paying consequences. So we need to repent of that sin when you say, God, I'm sorry for that. Sorry for speeding, God, forgive me for, you know, whatever the thing is. I don't know what your situation is, but forgive me of, of making a bad decision. Ask God to, to, to forgive you and then repent. We, do you remember what repent is, right? To turn around, I got a great story of repent that I was reminded. I'm using Mars a lot because we were in the car all day yesterday. Um, a few, well, right last year, Mars and I were riding dirt bikes, our little dirt bikes, our really small little dirt bikes. And we'll just say we bend the law a little bit, riding them around. And uh, we were cruising down the street and <laughs> Mars was in front of me. And we come around a corner, it's kind of a blind corner. And there was a motorcycle cop right there, uh, had a car pulled over and we were on our dirt bikes and we come around the corner. Mars is in front of me and we're coming around the corner and he sees the cop, and I'm watching the whole thing happen. He sees the cop, and I, I'm a, he repented for sure. <laughs> this is the perfect picture of repent. He's going, and he hits the brake like this, turns around, and takes off the opposite way <laughs> so quickly. I've never seen a guy turn so fast on a dirt bike ever. Like the pro motocrossers have not made a turn that sharp in their life and gone the opposite direction. And I'm just like, what is going on? And I, he goes by me the other way. And I just kind of wave at the cop and go on by, right? And it's no biggie, no big deal. If you know Mars is before Christ's life, you know why he'd be running from cops, right? <laughs> you guys know his story. So just, it was in him to just, you know, you see the cops, you run or you put your hands up or whatever, right? That's repent. To repent is to go, nope, right? And go the opposite way. That's what we need to do when we sin. Ask God for forgiveness. 
and then repent of the sin that got us in that problem. Now listen, I know not all of our trials or troubles are, are because of our own sin, but when they are, we need to repent and turn away from that sin and go the other way. Part of repentance is putting up boundaries in our lives, okay? So that means if your friends keep getting you in trouble, then what do you need to do? You need to get rid of those friends. If your hobbies keep getting you in trouble, then you need to get rid of those hobbies. You need to change hobbies, right? Like if you're trying to, I was talking with a guy last year who said he was trying to quit drinking. And every day on the way home from work, he kept going by the same, same gas station on the way home. And every day he stopped, he would stop and get a 12 pack or a six pack or whatever at that gas station every day on the way home and then he would go home. And I said, dude, go a different way home, right? Put some, bout, like, take for it, let's just talk about beer. Let's talk about Starbucks. Not that that's a sin, but let's say like you were trying to stop drinking Starbucks, right? And every morning you drive up 24th Street and you stop at that one right over by Walmart and you get your caramel macchiato, whatever it is, right? You go in there and you get it all and, and then the next day you're like, I gotta stop, right? But you drive by and what's this? You can smell it, right? Like, oh, and what happens? You just turn on in, right? It just happens because it's habit. It's natural. The temptation is there. You got to have it, right? So what I tell people is a boundary would be drive to work up 16th Street, right? Don't even drive by a Starbucks. We need to, in our life, put boundaries in our life to help us repent, okay? Because we're weak. Okay, we're, yes, we're asking for God for direction and guidance and power to resist that thing or to stop that thing or whatever, but then also we need to do our part and put boundaries in our lives to keep us away from those stupid things that we're doing. Okay? So we need to repent of those things if they're part of our problem, if there's things that we're bringing up. And then the next one is the, the letter O is to own your part. Own your part of the situation. Proverbs 28, 13 says this, people who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So we need to ask forgiveness of people that we've hurt. Okay? If, if, there's a, if there's a trial or trouble or pain, a lot of times there's other people associated with it. A lot of time the trouble in our life is relational. Right? It's people that we're in an argument with or there's just conflict. And most time, if you're in conflict with someone, you need to own some of your part of that. 99% of the time, conflict is not one-sided, right? It's not just me being a turd to you and you receiving it. Like it's, it's brought on by stuff. And so we need to own our part. We need to go to that person. And yes, we need to get right with God, right? Get right vertically. We talked about that. But then also get right horizontally. And say, listen, I'm sorry for what I've done in this situation. Forgive me. Help me make it right. How can I make it right? What can I do to, to fix this situation? We need to own our part. Okay? And then the last letter is the letter W. And that's, we need to wear our spiritual armor daily. Okay? So I've got some, if you remember, let me share that verse really quick. It's Ephesians 6. 11, it says, put on all the armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Remember in our Ephesians series, there's all kinds of stuff all over this. We talked about body armor. Do you remember we talked about the spiritual armor of God, right? And the breastplate of what? What was it? Breastplate of? Righteousness, yeah. We need to wear our armor daily. If we're going to grow in trials... We need to put this on every single day because some of the things that are come, going to come our way are temptations for sure. But then also we need to prepare ourselves okay, for those things, those, those things that are coming at us that are spiritual attacks, those arrows that Satan, are, that he's shooting at us that are going to hurt us, that are going to take us down. And a lot of times what we do is we wait to put on our armor until what? Until the arrows start flying. When arrows start flying, then they're like, 
where's my, where's my flak jacket, right? Like arrows start coming at you, troubles start coming, you're like, where's my armor? I gotta find it, and then you can't find it. A lot of guys, when I was in the Border Patrol, a lot of guys used to just keep their vest in their truck, right? They'd just keep it in their truck, and then when something bad would happen, they'd throw it on and then engage. Well, it's too late by then. A lot of times you don't have time to go to your truck or you're out in the middle of the desert or whatever, right? It's just, it, what happens is you don't have enough time to put that on. But a lot of us, we don't pray on our spiritual armor daily. We only pray on our spiritual armor whenever we feel like we need it, okay? And by then it's too late, right? It's too late. So do you know how, do you know how these vests work, Jacob? So I'm gonna give you this vest, you gotta you got basically put it on. So we're gonna do a little test. We're gonna see how fast you can get this on before you get shot, okay? Put it on, here we go. Let's see what happens. You better hurry up, because there's someone coming at you. Put it on, Jacob. Put it on, Jacob. You're getting shot still. He's still getting shot. Okay. That's like, that, like he got shot. I think every ball hit him, right? But that's what we do. We wait until the balls, the little Nerf balls start firing at us to put it on. And for most of us, it's way too late, okay? Because you're never gonna know. You never know when those things are coming. So we need to do that every morning. God, God protect me. I pray on this armor today. Protect me from those those things, those fiery darts, those things that are going to come. We need to do that on a daily, you know, schedule. Because who knows when those things are going to come. Instead of just trying to get it on as fast and you're running, you're getting shot in the gut, you know, and things like that. That's what happens. It's not enough time. So we need to do that on a daily basis. And I think as we do things like this, listen, these things, they're going to come at you. It's not if they come, it's when they come, right? We talked about that. Trials are coming. Temptations are coming. Troubles are coming. Pain is coming. Okay, these things are coming at you. Whether you think they're going to or not, they're going to. And we need to be ready for those things. And so, when someone says, God will never give you more than you can handle, it's normally when you're right in the middle of something that's hard. It's normally when you're right in the middle of one of those troubles and then you think, okay, I just got to get through this. Most of us think, I just got to get through this. We don't necessarily think, God, how do, you, how do I need to grow through this? We think, how do I get through it? Not how do I grow through it? I want you to think about the change there. Getting through something is different than growing through something. Does that make sense? That just, just enduring, just bear, you know what I mean? Like there's a difference between allowing God to use this event in your life to grow you than there is just gritting your teeth and hoping it goes away, right? I hope it goes away. And so we can look at these things and we can grow through them. Okay? We can grow through them by giving the problem to God. Here's all of those things together. Okay, give the problem to God. Say, God, give me the eyes to see this in the, in the situation that it is. Give me eyes to see it from your perspective. Help me to see what's going on here. Give me wisdom to know to how to deal with this situation. Then the R's repent of the sin. Maybe he'll reveal to you that, that listen, you're just, you're just dealing with consequences of your own sin. Okay, you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to pay the fine. You have to pay the hundred dollar, hundred and twenty dollar ticket or whatever it is. Okay, you ate that huge chili pepper burrito. You're gonna have to pay the fine, right? You guys know what that means, some of you, right? Right, Cynthia, you know. Well, I know, right? You got to pay the fine. Okay, you got to repent, turn around, do like Marsh did on that dirt bike, and what? What? Right? And turn around and get away from that. Get away from that sin. And then we need to own our part. Sometimes we've hurt people in the process of the problem that, we, that we're experiencing. A lot of times it's brought on by ourselves, by our own sin. And so we need to go to someone and say, Jacob, I'm sorry for letting you get shot. Right? You need to own that because that was my idea. 
right? And I knew you were going to get nailed. So I need to apologize for you because I knew you weren't that fast. I need to apologize to you. I was looking around. Who do I want to get, right? So I chose him. It's your scapegoat. And then the last thing is we need to wear our spiritual armor because it's going to be too late. If when you're in the middle of it, you say, oh, I need to get spiritual. It's too late, man. You're already getting attacked. So do that every single morning. That's my prayer is that we can grow through this. And remember, not to be phrased Nazis and say, that's not true. But learn in those experiences, those problems, those trials that we're experiencing. Learn to grow through them. That's my prayer. Uh, ladies, why don't you come forward um, as, as we're going to sing one last song. Um, and remember, it's not if trials come, it's, when, it's what? When. It's really important. It's a really important change of thought. It's not if trials come, but when they come. Okay? So let's grow through those trials. Let's grow through those things that come in our direction. And then, you know, my prayer is that, my prayer is that you can learn to have joy in those trials, which is kind of a trip if you think about it. It's kind of a trip to have joy in trials.